All right, now welcome to our exit ticket that we have here. Kind of the problem that's gonna sum up a lot of the things that we've been learning about so far. So let's add these two rational expressions together. First thing we do is we wanna look for its lowest common denominator. And again, one of the strategies that we developed to help do that is let's factor everything down to its factors. So I'm gonna write x squared minus two does not factor, two x squared minus x plus minus three does factor into a 2x and an x factors into a one and a three and the three needs to be negative, the x is positive, that's positive. And then over on the other side, I have an x minus two and a three minus two x. Now before we get too, too much, too far down the road, you guys recognize, don't you? This three minus two x and this two x minus three, they're just offset by a factor of negative one. So remember the little technique that we use when we do that? Let's multiply it by a clever version of one. And the one we're choosing is a negative one over a negative one, multiplying it by then the x minus two over three minus two x. From there, we can go ahead, I'll clean this up a little bit. Let's just clean this up. Multiply that negative one through, uh, gives me a negative x plus a two, and I'm just gonna rewrite it as a two minus, whoops, that's a minus, an x. <laughs> I'll try and do it that way. And then on the other one, I have a two x minus a three. All right, just to make sure I did that correctly. Okay, from here, we're still looking at its lowest common denominator. I noticed that uh, all the terms are listed here, one's missing on this side. So let's multiply this side by a clever version of one, and the one that we're gonna choose is x plus one over x plus one. Remember, multiplying a fraction or expression by one doesn't change its value. This helps me now that I can find, now I can determine its lowest common denominator. Both sides are common with a two X minus a three and an X plus a one. From there, we can clean up the top a little bit. I have an X squared minus a two plus, I have a two minus X times an X plus a one. Yeah, yikes. That's gonna be some work to deal with, but that's all right, we can do that. We can do that. So let me just start to transition it over here. X squared minus two plus, I'm gonna leave that for a second, then on the bottom I have the two X minus three times the X plus one. All right, I need to multiply two minus X times X plus one. Uh, so first term times first term gives me a two X. Uh, two times the one gives me a two. The minus X times the X gives me a minus X squared. And then the minus X times the one gives me a minus X. All right, so I was able to go ahead and rewrite. I added or subtracting uh, my numerator. Now I'm going ahead and simplify if I can possibly simplify somewhere. So let's see what, what adds up. X squared and negative X squared, those cancel out or zero out. I have a negative two and a positive two, those zero out. Two X minus an X, that just becomes X. And there's no common factors uh, on the bottom with that. So my denominator remains two X minus three times X plus one. So there's my solution. Again, it's with the caveat that we have some values that will make the denominator crash or go to zero. So we need to remember to exclude those in our final tally.